Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Wrench. On today's show, we are going to put the finishing touches on Fatboy Slim. This 1967 911, I'm converting to a 911R. So this car behind me has a bit of a storied past. When I got it, it had wide body RSR flares. The rear wheels were too far up in the wheel wells because they had put long wheelbase flares on this short wheelbase car. It had 17 inch wheels. The whole thing all the way around was complete and utter blasphemy. What I've done in the last couple of episodes is convert it to a sports purpose 911R. So far, I've welded on the original narrow body flares. I've added some 911R Talbot mirrors, 911R fenders, 911R front bumper. Now I have to finish the 911R rear bumper, 911R taillights, and fixing a rusty panel just below the rear glass. Let me take you for a quick lap around the car and show you what we're gonna do to finish this bad boy off in this episode. All right, here she is in all her glory. Here's the mirrors that I put on. The front fenders still need to be fully bolted on, but they're pretty much there. Brand new headlights looking amazing. Working our way back to the narrow body rear fenders. I do have a little bit of body work I still wanna do. Maybe one more little skim coat of filler and then I can throw some primer on there. And then this bad boy, which is this hole that I've gotta fix. So I'm gonna cut this thing out and weld a new piece in and get that together, do that today. So to do that, I need to pull the rear deck lid, obviously, and then I'm gonna be cutting this part out. I do have a replacement part from Restoration Design. The rear 911R taillights, which I don't have handy, but are beautiful from TRE Motorsports. They require a little more grinding on the bottom, so I will take care of that as well. And then I've gotta modify the rear bumper by cutting some slits in it to kind of narrow it to the body. I'll show you guys when the time comes, but uh, that's kind of the last major project to do on this thing. And then everything just needs to be just basically tightened up and bolted on and we are good to go. Okay, the patient is somewhat prepped and here is the replacement panel. We had a big rust spot here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take the grinding wheel to this and grind all of this away. Kind of see what I'm working with. I'm gonna probably have to drill out some spot welds as this is kind of a 3D piece. There's an underside here, and this part kind of only goes on top. So what I don't wanna do is have to get into the window molding at all. So I'm probably gonna to try to cut this thing here and just trim what I need off of this panel uh, to weld it in.
All right, gents. I've got an hour-ish into this piece and I'm pretty comfortable with it. It looks pretty good. I'm gonna start right here because this is the most important body line and make sure the alignment is right and it looks correct. And then make sure this is all flush. Kind of work my way around with tacks and clamps. And then once it's all clamped and ready to go, I can fill in these spot welds and make sure I can tap it down. The big challenge here is that there's a ton of lead in this area because the factory used lead for filler here. So it may be one of those things like I can tell all of this is lead. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna try to weld, but it's actually just gonna melt the lead. So I kind of have to melt the lead until the steel gets there. And once it does, we are good to go. At that point, I can start working on like how I'm gonna stitch this edge up here. I'm not entirely sure how I'm gonna do that yet. Uh, but we're going to make sure this thing is like in and stable and then we will take it one step at a time. All right, guys, we are well patched. And what I'm gonna do now is actually hit this with some fiberglass filler. There's some spots in here that literally this all has lead. So there's nothing I can do about that. I can re-lead it, I actually have lead, but the new fiberglass filler is better and safer than the lead, and it will do just as strong of a job. So I'm gonna hit that in here and we should be good to go. All right, here we go. I got a layer of fiberglass filler on, quick sand, a little bit of shaping, it'll need some final filler. I will probably save that for the body shop doing the work on this car. But I uh, feel really good about this. I think it looks great. I'm gonna go take Mr. Ben out for a little Frisbee. You guys wanna go Frisbee right now? What do you think, Mr. Ben? Let's go, bro. All right, we are back. I've done just a couple of things since we've last seen each other. Number one, I put a layer of fiberglass filler on the repair, sanded that down. Now I've got a layer of my Evercoat uh, Z-Grip on there that I need to do a quick sand, and this repair will be fully done. I also have to finish these panels up before I prime the entire thing. If you guys are gonna do these 911R conversion taillights, uh, these ones came from TRE Motorsports. These ones, what am I saying? These came from TRE Motorsports. And to fit correctly, you've gotta grind the top lip here, this underside of uh, the quarter panel. So these things are fitting. I've gotta drill out the holes here so they can be mounted. And that's gonna be done. Sand this entire quarter panel. And then I actually have some 2K primer that I'm gonna coat the entire quarter panel with. Now, the last major project on this car uh, is the rear bumper. So I've got the bumper mounts mounted right now. And, you know, the bumper is just this fiberglass thing that goes around like this. What always has to happen is you've got to cut slits in the bumper so that the sides mold their way into the body correctly. I'll show you guys in a second what I'm talking about. It's kind of the last thing I have to do on the car to get the panels all fitting. So I'm gonna wrap up the sanding really quick uh, here on the quarters, and then we're gonna get onto this rear bumper right away.
Okay, so I've made a huge mess of myself and the garage, but last major project, pretty much whenever you fit a fiberglass bumper, it's not gonna fit this way as well as you want it to, which is the case in this instance. So what you do, and what I did on the gray ghost, what I did on the green car, is you cut slits in the bumper, and that's gonna allow it to pull the edges in a little bit. Like worst case scenario, you have to narrow the whole thing, but I'm not gonna do that with this one. So I'm gonna cut some relief slits. I'm gonna push it in a little bit, hopefully get some bolts to go through the bumper. And then with uh, any luck, I'm gonna put some fiberglass filler on the underside and allow that to harden so they are stuck in the in position. At that point, I hope I'll be able to just lay some actual fiberglass in. Otherwise that fiberglass reinforced green filler works pretty great on its own. I mean, it's really, really strong. So you may or may not actually have to fiberglass new pieces in, uh, provided you sand everything flat. Now, most of this body stuff is gonna have to get body worked by whoever paints the car anyway. Um, the client may want to fill in this whole, you know, there's gonna be a whole bunch of stuff they have to do just to prepare these panels. But if I can get it relatively close, get everything bolted together, then we are good to go. All right, so these are the relief cuts and you can see got a little bit of flexibility now in the bumper. So let's go fit this thing up and see how we do. Okay, rear bumper is fit. Looks killer. I measured the distance here out from the body. So it's even on both sides. I'm gonna lay some fiberglass reinforced filler right here on each corner and just lock the curvature in on each side. All right, so I'm gonna mix up a little, uh, kind of a hot version of this fiberglass filler. And by hot, I mean I'm gonna put a bunch of hardener in here because I want it to set up pretty quick. I just wanna put a couple of uh, swipes on the bumper and get it to lock in where it is right now. So I've got the car masked off, just so I can hit this thing with a quick coat of primer. I've got the 2K primer in a can. I've got it all wiped down. And uh, th the bummer is the primer that the uh, client grabbed is beige, but it'll be nice to see this thing all one color. Just to reiterate, the bodywork is not done on this car. This is still gonna require a trained hand to make all the surfaces really flat, but I think we're probably 80% of the way there. It feels really good. And uh, once the single color's on, it's gonna look awesome. Okay, so this is real 2K primer. This is some real deal stuff. This is as good as you'd get in a body shop. It comes in a special can. It's got this little plunger in the uh, top here. And what you do is pull this thing out. You poke it into the bottom, which mixes the hardener into the primer. And then you've got like real deal epoxy primer. It's expensive, it's like 40 bucks. Uh, for whatever reason, I think it's probably a mistake. The client grabbed beige. That's okay, it doesn't matter. It's all gonna get sanded and stuff anyway. Uh, but important things about this, you have to wear a mask. Uh, this is some real deal gnarly stuff. So you have to wear a mask. Let's do this now and then I will uh, pop it open.
Okay, we are on. It looks really good. Not taking my mask off yet, but once this thing dries, it'll dry nice and smoothly. But you can see the body lines are really nice. Yeah, we're looking good, baby. Looking good. I've let this thing dry for 20, 30 minutes. I'm going to uh, pull the plastic off and clean up. Call it a day. Look at this slick little thing now. Looks so good. Yeah, super stoked about the lines on this car now. All right, guys, now that we are primed and good to go, I've got the lights kind of gently mounted here. I still have to drill the holes. I've got to get this rear bumper fiberglass in. So what happens is when you buy these things, they give you the mounts and the mounts bolt to the car. Then you've got to fit the bumper where you want it. And then you have to fiberglass the mounts to the bumper. So that's kind of where I am right now. The problem is this exhaust is in the way. So I think I actually have to pull the muffler and get that thing out of the way so I can fiberglass in the, uh, the bumper. Hey Ben, I was just talking about bumpers. What do you think? You wanna fiberglass the bumpers in with me? <laughs> Let's go. So I had a little bit of a hitch here where my temporary fix actually cracked as soon as I sanded. So that was a bummer. So I kind of peeled it back together, taped it up with some masking tape and then fiberglassed on the inside. So while I'm waiting for the fiberglass to dry, I'm gonna go to the front end, uh, jack it up and just tighten the fenders down a little bit. Now I don't really need to bolt these fenders down because ultimately, as soon as they get to the paint shop, they're gonna get pulled off anyway. But this is someone else's car. They're gonna show up here. I want the car to look cool for them. I want the client to feel good about uh, the fit and about how the car looks as this cool narrow body hot rod. So I'm gonna jack the front of the car up, throw a few screws where they need to be just to get the thing tightened up, looking good. And then we're gonna hopefully have this thing dry and move on to the last step. So this is the first time it's ever been really all tightened up with the rear quarters painted. Looks good, doesn't it? Look at this thing, that is tight. This is going to be a very cool, super lightweight hot rod and a great segue into this small announcement. So imagine your own super lightweight 911R hot rod. Myself and a partner of mine are doing commissioned builds. If you can imagine a 911R, but it's like a Singer where the panels are all carbon fiber. It's got a bunch of really cool modern tweaks like I did on the Blasphemy build. You have an option to do a Hot Rod 2.0 Porsche engine or a Subaru EZ30 flat six like in the Blasphemy build. Custom integrated tail lights like on the Blasphemy build. A lot of really cool electronics and modern features built into this very cool lightweight chassis. Something that you can imagine would be really comfortable to drive, but super modern, super lightweight and snappy in the twisties. If you are interested in a commission build, please drop me a line either on Instagram or at wrenchme at gmail.com. I will forward you the visuals that we are putting together now, as well as some of the options you might have. As you can imagine, the visual options are just about endless, but we can make this beautiful bespoke 911R concept that I'm calling the Wrench R for you. So if you're interested, please DM me and I'll forward you a little info when we get it. All right, 
We are dialed in here. I've got the jack boosting the rear bumper a little bit. I've got good access to each mounting point on the inside. I've got the lights on, I've got the bumper clamped. So now it's just a matter of getting some fiberglass on there, laying it in on the inside and letting it dry. All right guys, it's the next day and I'm hoping that the fiberglass on the rear bumper should be somewhat stable. So we're gonna remove it gently, get it over to the table and then reinforce it with much more fiberglass and resin to make it a nice strong piece. Okay, mission accomplished. These things are nice and strong, but they need a lot of reinforcement. So what we do now is really lay in some good fiberglass, uh, especially here on the inside. Once that's in, I will lock it in on each side with some fiberglass and we'll have a nice strong bumper. Okay guys, it's the next day and I've just cleaned up the rear bumper with my little quarter inch angle grinder. We are all set, we are glassed in like super solid with both of these. And uh, I've drilled a couple of holes in the car itself so I can put a bolt through here. So I need to bolt the bumper into the car, mark these things, drill them out, and then I can finally mount the thing and be done with this bad boy. All right, on and off one more time. Guys, it's hard to believe, but I just have to bolt this exhaust on and this puppy is Dunzo, Dunzel Washington. I do have to put a door panel on, so I kind of just lied, but for the most part, the thing is done except for this exhaust. So I'm gonna bolt this sucker on and maybe take it for a little vroom vroom. Thing came to me a couple months ago needless to say it was a bit rough it was a short wheelbase 911 with really really wide flares and huge heavy wheels now it is a beautiful short wheelbase sports purpose hot rod here's what we did we replaced the front and rear bumpers replaced the front fenders replaced the rear quarter panels with steel narrow body quarters replaced the wheels and tires added some beautiful talbot mirrors added some beautiful integrated turn signal headlights, some 911R taillights, and then wrapped everything up in this nice, beautiful package. Look at it. I gave it a quick cleanup because, I mean, it's been sitting around the shop for a couple of months. I'm so happy with how this thing looks. It's gonna look amazing once it's in paint, and I'll be sure to update you guys when the client has it painted and we get to see it once again. Now, if you don't understand why we did all this stuff, have a look at the history of the 1967 Porsche 911R. The important part of this car is the weight. We took hundreds of pounds off of this car, and I'll tell you what, 
Even as I pulled out of the garage, I could feel how light it was. I'm gonna take it for a quick spin around the block because I don't have any working taillights, but I wanna see how it feels now with the new nimble bodywork, the smaller wheels and tires, and the hundreds of pounds lighter. So with that, that concludes the Porsche 911R project. Thank you guys for watching. Please tune in to Wrench on Instagram. I will see you guys next time.